Kastuba Das here with a big announcement for Wisdom of the Sages listeners. This August will be Ashram Month at the Super Soul Farm. Simple ashram living, rising early, morning kirtan, yoga and pranayama, healthy vegan and vegetarian meals, farm seva and being immersed in nature, and then gathering in the evenings for kirtan and readings. Plus, each week we'll have a lead presenter teaching a different facet of the philosophy and lifestyle of bhakti yoga. Week number one will be the exceptional bhakti lata teaching a course called The Beauty of Bhakti, bringing the culture of love and devotion into our lives. Week number two is my brother from another mother, Raghunath, teaching Falling in Love with Divinity, the Bhakti Yogi's method for opening the heart. And week number three is myself with a course called Following the Path, examining the history and teachings of Bhakti Yoga. You can come for one, two, or all three weeks, and the pricing is by donation. For more dates and information, go to wisdomthesages.com slash events. Peace. Hey Raghunath, tell everyone about our Patreon community. Sure, Kastuba. The Wisdom of the Sages Patreon community is an incredible online yoga resource. If you like the type of yoga, wisdom, and culture we share on the show, then our Patreon community is a great next step. This is a listener-supported podcast, and any level of sponsorship will unlock a wide range of live and archived classes, talks, and even workshops. Raghunath teaches, I teach, and we have a host of other excellent teachers on topics ranging from yoga philosophy, asana classes, storytelling, Ayurveda, kirtan, cooking, meditation, and a lot more. We even have an incredible online bhakti 12-step recovery group. So if you want to check it out, go to patreon.com slash wisdom of the sages. All right, let's get it on. Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Hi from Super Soul Farm. This is Wisdom of the Sages a daily yoga podcast with your host, Raghunath, and co-host and senior educator at the Bhakti Center in New York, Kastuba Das. Welcome to the show, everybody. Welcome to Interview Day. If you're new to the show, welcome. If you are new to this listening on Facebook, welcome, Facebook people. We do this every day. It's a daily study of the classic yogic literature, connecting the jiva to the source. You want to become a sorcerer? That's how you do it. This is uh, the deep study of bhakti yoga, the study of the Srimad Bhagavatam. But on Sundays, it's interview day. And before we invite in, uh, introduce our guest, which we're really excited for, we have a few announcements. First of all, welcome, Kastuba. Thank you, Raga. How are you? You look very dapper. You're going to oh, off yeah. to somewhere. He's studying at Oxford. Look at him. I'm they make you wear Oxford, that. Is that the no, school they... uniform? Is that <laughs> no. the school uniform? I have the landscapers uniform on today, as you can tell. You're... Poor Chuck hat on there. Did, did they give you the hat when you bought, bought the truck? Oh, they gave me the hat when you buy the truck. <laughs> yes, it's true. Okay. <laughs> no, I got a wedding to go to. I'm one of those guys. Whenever I buy something, I was like, hey, can I get a shirt? Can I get a T-shirt? <laughs> you get hats, wristbands to throw in some, a full tank of gas. <laughs> <laughs> Is that your painting gear? You're going to paint the place today? No, I, I go down to a real dirt bag when I start painting. <laughs> This is just sort of lawn maintenance to overseeing. And where are you going all sophisticated? I'm going also to upstate New York. There's a wedding today. Wedding of Yamuna Bihari and Leela Vrindavan. Oh, yes. This a lot is... of friends there. Yeah. Looking forward to that. And then um, I come back. I go up, I come back down, and then I'll go up and see you tomorrow. We're looking forward to having you come. Mara cooked for, there was two weddings, you know. That's what happens when you get into Bhakti. Oh, you did have Mara cater to the wedding that I'm going to? No. Oh. Get somebody at Mara. They 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 uh, put Mara to the non devotee wedding. Okay. Mara gets the non devotees. Are like, mm, we're gonna that, put her to the. That said, there are a lot of devotees there. There are a lot of devotees there. That's yeah. a problem with being a devotee. You start to develop a bunch of spiritual friends. Also, I remember Rachel's wedding when she got married here. She had like <laughs> she, she had a completely married to two weddings the same exact day. That was a great day. Yeah. She had the regular wedding. She's wearing white, you know, um, you know, tuxedos, whatever. And uh, the you family. The and then, it, then all of a sudden, a busload of Harry Christmas <laughs> showed up. <laughs> <laughs> the fire was built. The fire. Yug, yes, sorry. has got thrown on. Tuxedos ripped off. The mantras was chanted. wrapped in a sorry. Mantras were chanted. 
ghee was thrown in the fire. Um, Mara cooked for that one. She made a. She was making a. What did you make? Alu tikis, all the oh, in, yeah, Indian yeah, street yeah. food. That was a great day. Um. Anyway, we've got a couple announcements also, too. Uh, we are having Ashram Month. It's back on. If you ever want to live in an ashram, we're doing it the month of August. Sign up for one week, two weeks, three weeks. Go to wisdomofthesages.com. Click on Ashram Month. And it's like ashram training. And uh, the web, the link is back up. If you tried to get to it unsuccessfully, it's back up. And it's in upstate New York. And it's fun. It's the all the fun stuff of living in an ashram and studying and then living simply and good food and good people and education. And you bring it back to your community and, um, and spread that love around. Uh, also, you can click on the Sage Academy tab because we have a lot of other things. We feel in the bhakti culture, the best thing you can offer someone is some type of education because it changes a person. It changes their trajectory in life. So we have uh, Bobby Marchand is doing the quiet side Friday, June 24th to June 26th. It's a weekend of yin, restorative, and bhakti. Um, we're doing our first annual Wisdom of the Sages 4th of July picnic, and that's going to be filled with a little bit of a holy festival, lots of kirtan, lots of great um, Indian street food also. We're doing kirtan school on Wednesday. That's like a, a big week. It's a Wednesday to a Sunday with me and Madhu. If you want to add kirtan to your yoga classes or learn how to lead a kirtan or just use uh, kirtan for your personal meditation, we do these. We try to make everything like reasonably priced so people can afford it. And we also try to offer scholarships. So check out wisdomofthesages.com. Did you mention uh, next weekend? Yeah, there's still spaces available. For oh, New York? That's, Our New that's York the City one. I didn't yeah. mention that. We're going to be in New York City next week. This week and at the farm is sold out our Wisdom of the Sages retreat up here with Sachin and the Swami. Um, and go to bhaktisenter.org and, and their in-person events or in-house events. Yes. And you can find that right there. Yeah. That'll be fun. Um, that's going to be a real, that's going to be a lot of fun. That, it's uh, all fun. It's all fun. So that starts next <laughs> Friday night. Yeah, it's amazing. Okay. Um, Oh, Italy. We have like two spaces yeah, left yeah, for it. <laughs> and then Jared. doesn't end. The announcements don't end today, people. And okay. that's the show. Okay, I was going to say. <laughs> that's the show. All right. We have a good and very, very interesting theme today. Um, we hear so much and feel so wonderful when people are going through a struggle with a life challenging disease like cancer. And they come out the other side and say, I beat cancer. I'm cancer free. Or this is a, this is one I just prayed or I just believed in a miracle and a miracle happened. But what happens when there's no miracle healing? Have we been be betrayed by God? When there is no hope, when you're not going to beat it and you know it, and there's no amount of prayer that's going to make it go away. This is going to be the topic today's show. Um, having spiritual hope when there's no material hope whatsoever. So I want to welcome uh, Gopal Chandra Prabhu. He's here. He's a neighbor, actually. He was, you know, he he was my student. And but, you know, he's like a, a good friend of mine. Um, in, when he lived in New York City, he ran two, maybe three yoga studios with his mom, who's also been to India with me. Wonderful lady. Um, uh, he became a very empowered yoga teacher. Um, and then he started when he moved upstate with his family, he started teaching at our yoga studio. Everybody loved him. If I was sick or going away, all the students would say, hey, can you get Gopal Chandra to sub, please? Can you please get Gopal Chandra to sub? I was like, oh, come on. I hated it because they didn't <laughs> like when I came back. And um, and, uh, you know, he started getting serious about his bhakti path and he got initiated by his holiness Radhanath Swami a few years ago. And uh, here he is today on the show. He found out a couple of years ago, I think it was right during the pandemic, he called me over to his house, said, Raghunath, I'm going through cancer right now. And um, I'm, I'm happy to be, you know, as close as I can to him through all of this. And Gopal Chandra Prabhu, welcome to the show. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for the introduction. Thank you. Um, may I just say real fast? Uh, I always thought that I had the 
like the the hipster, a great hipster initiated name by calling myself self Gopal, etc. But whoever this Rade Rade Rachel person is, <laughs> that's she, she beat him a hipster. Rade Rade Rachel, yeah. <laughs> Rade Rade Rachel. He did get a great name. I'm very undeserving, I'll tell you that much. But, uh, <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, how, how are you guys? You guys are good? We're good. We're very happy to be here with you. Yeah, Prabhu, you know, I can share something slightly embarrassing, if you don't mind. I remember when you moved right down the road from Super Soul Farm. Yeah. And I was walking with Radna Swami at Super Soul. And I said, yeah, Gopal Chandra has just moved right up the road. And he said, he will be a great asset to you, Raghunath. And I remembered that. And I was like, what does that mean? Is he going to get rich and give, give money? Is he going to do <laughs> lots of work? Is he going to work in the garden? Is he going to, um, you know, I know you're, you're actually very good with your hands. You're a good builder. I was like, maybe he's going to build something. Like when Radha Swami, sometimes Radha Swami, if you know him, sometimes he's speaks in like prophecy, like prophetic words. And uh, I was th I was thinking, well, what does he mean by that? And then we well, called me over that day and uh, you told me you had cancer. And I was like and and you were very thin also. I mean, Gopal was big, strong, tall. You're still tall. But um, I was thinking, well, and this is very, very embarrassing to even say this, but I was thinking, well, how is he an asset? He can barely take care of himself now. I, I, I was trying to feel like, how is that prophecy going to come true? And you know what? The prophecy is coming through. The, the devotee's words, they're always perfect. I have learned so much by, by going to your house, by being with you. Um, you're really demonstrating hope when there's no hope. And I feel like Prabhu... I feel like I started off your teacher and now I'm learning just so much because everything I do in my life is very, very um, theoretical. And uh, you're, you're demonstrating practical. You're demonstrating how to be very practical in, in the application, application of bhakti. And I'm, excuse me for being sad or crying right now. I'm actually not sad. Whenever I go to your house, I'm very joyful. And I'm joyful by your joy, uh, by your realizations and by your dealing with it. And so uh, thank you. That's my embarrassing statement. You are such an asset in my life, Prabhu. And you're helping me like really understand bhakti in a, in a very deep way. Thank you for letting me be a student of yours. <laughs> I I don't know how to respond to that, but it reminds me of uh, of this embarrassing moment, this embarrassing weekend I had where 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 many of my friends came to stay for you know a week, two weeks, three weeks, and one day I'm sitting on the couch next to my best friend in the world, Andrew. Um, I've known him since I was, you know, in middle school. And he's, and, and he's sitting next to me, he just starts crying. And instead of like letting him have his, his mourning and letting him experience his mourning, I chastised him for his mourning. And I, 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 I went off on him for being upset telling him like no i'm like you, you're not allowed to be this upset this is my death <laughs> and i'm stipulating this and this is going to be uh you know a, a joyful celebration mm -hmm. and I, I i and i realized that you know a few days later actually no my friend bill confronted me and he says he says dude you need to you need to let him mourn if he needs to mourn and I felt like such a jerk, you know? I felt like, like, like such a jerk for, you know, calling him out on actually, you know, 
sharing his feelings, you know, especially, you know, in this day and age where, you know, we want men to share their feelings where, where, you know, it's no longer keep it behind the wall. And here I am yelling at him because he's ruining my vibe, you know? Well, you know, I was sharing to Mara that you were coming on the show last week and um, she brought up something really, you know, sanguine. Like Mara was living in Austin, Texas, I think, when her mom got diagnosed with cancer. And she just said, you know, I'm not going to go through the chemo. And Mara quit her job, left everything, flew back to the East Coast. And um, she was basically nursing her mother's and had a very like intimate connection with her mom the entire time with her mother every day. And she said, when people come over, sometimes you end up becoming the caregiver for them instead of the other way around. And you have to ha- try to help them deal with their emotions. So, yeah. um, <laughs> so, but, but one thing I noticed with us um, was, uh, you know, we'd come over there and have Kirtan a few times. Priya G came over and um, who else came over? Bobby, Bobby. Marchand and, um, Rachel and Rachel Manalis came, Roddy, Roddy, Rachel. And so it, it was this thing where we were sort of like, we're having Kirtan. And some of us are trying to like, we're, they maybe haven't seen you in a while and they're trying to deal with how do I relate to this guy and what he's going through? And you're not just losing, every, you're losing your body, you're losing your home, you're losing your family. And so they're trying to process it. And in the midst of the Kirtan, you're in great joy. You know, you're in great joy and seeing that joy, it's it, first of all, it gives us faith in the process, which is very, you know, very, very important for everybody on the path. Like yeah. there, there, there's hope, there's hope in no, in no material hope. Can you explain the recipe, the ingredients, you know, what you're putting in your life and in your mind perhaps and perhaps maybe I, I I get it I don't I don't I, I know you, you still struggle with things as well too but could you explain your day-to-day what are you doing on the day-to-day that is helping you ease ease the material and mental pain well I could tell you that first of all you know I've I've I th- you know I, I, I I still have a few blessings left that are in my life. You know, my, my, I have two beautiful daughters, you know, they're just, and, you know, if it wasn't for my two beautiful daughters, uh, I think I would have gone the route of Mara's mother, which is I wouldn't have taken any, any course of treatment. I would just kind of let it play let it play itself out. But uh, for them, I agreed to fight it out as long as I could. But every morning, it's changed from the beginning. I remember in the very beginning, I had this feeling of uh, that I need to do this kind of mad dash for salvation, you know? And what that means is I would, one thing I did was I, Bought the Srimad Bhagavatam right around the time that you and Kastuba were doing the reset and starting the Bhagavatam from the very beginning. Right. And I, I got to book four way beyond you. And I was like, ha, 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 ha. <laughs> These guys are such slow readers. But then I realized I, it, it, what, what I was doing is I was, I was doing it wrong. So mm. I stopped. I stopped. I said, no, I can this, uh, whatever this is, is not right. And then I just started listening to you guys instead of feeling like I need to read the entire Bhagavatam before I die. You know, that was not the goal. Mm. Um, you know, the goal was to listen. The goal was to ask questions. The goal was to ponder. The goal was to write, and, you know, to write. The goal was to, you know, consider the world around me. Uh, and and that was a big source of help. Now now, and then over the past years, 
I've just been falling deeper and deeper in love with Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Just, just you know, the pastimes coming out of the CC. Just, you know, I'm I'm the furthest from being, I'm the furthest from qualified for you know, even looking at the CC. But, you know, it it blows my mind and then just melts me down into nothing. If you're unfamiliar with that, I'm just going to butt in for people who are new. The CC is the biography of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, who's known as the Kirtan Avatar. And um, they're like beautiful pastime stories. Um, the Chaitanya Charitamrita. Yeah. And it is a great thing to absorb your mind in as well. It's sort of like the sort of like Lord Chaitanya was sort of like the gatekeeper for all this very deep philosophy and making it very accessible to a person like me, very unqualified to even understand um, the, the, the the essential teachings of, you know, what we know is in the West as Hinduism, which is really an, an enigma wrapped in a riddle. But he sort of like made it very basic to, you know, he, he made it very basic and accessible. And when you read these pastimes, it can really it's it's real, real sweet. Um, on and a more you, basic, yeah. I'm sorry, on no, a more basic it. level, you know, I I just try to you know keep some very simple um, regulations, like in my life and around my life, and permitting, you know, and orbiting my life. And one thing is when once I came out of the hospital. A few months ago, I had two pretty much back to back hospital stays that were um, just showed how quickly my deterioration had, you know, was. And uh, I decided that, you know, if there's any hatred, if there's any um, anger that I'm confronted with, uh, I'm going to try my hardest to re respond with love and compassion, you know? It doesn't hmm. mean, it doesn't even mean forgiveness, you know? I think you taught that once, Raghunath, that forgiveness is something that's freely held onto and freely given. But, you know, I, I can, I, I can still appreciate somebody and I can still show compassion towards somebody. Uh, you know, try to be less bitter about the situation. Try to see the gift that's packaged inside of this little bomb. You know, it's like. Sure. Right. Now, together. you forgive, but you just don't necessarily let them back into your life intimately. It's not like yeah. you don't relinquish that resentment. Is, is that what you mean to say? Yeah, because otherwise, for example, there's somebody in my life. Um, that I've known all my life, who uh, I forgave. I just called him up and I said, you know, this is stupid. It's over. I said, I, 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 can't, I, I can't live like this. Uh, and when I die, if we don't, if we haven't solved this by the time I died, it's going to, you know, it's going to be like a weight on your shoulders that you will never be able to get rid of, you know? Nice. So let's, so, so it's over. I Let's squash you. it. What do you say? What do you say? He told me he loved me. He told me he loved me, and 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 and, and he was so happy. And we squashed it just like it was so simple. It was a five minute conversation, and any resentment, any anything between us that there may have been, just got rid of it. How did that make you yeah. feel after that phone call? That very awkward phone call. It starts off yeah. awkward. It starts off awkward because, you know, you, you haven't spoken to this person for, you know, almost a decade or something. And all of a sudden yeah. you're talking to them. Uh, it starts off awkward. And then, and then it just, your, your whole life feels lighter. That's you know? it. That's Anger, it. resentment, you know, just any kind of venom that you, you're holding against somebody. You know, you're drinking that venom too. Right? I'm with you. You know, spiritual traditions all over the world talk about this. 12-step programs talk about this. We 
there'll always be a wall between us and God if we can't let go of resentment towards other people, if we're harboring resentment. Yeah. And um, that's beautiful. And it is beautiful that you just got that. Okay. I got to go through the, got to go through the list. What am I holding on to? And wouldn't mm -hmm. it be great if we could do that on a regular basis, like check in with ourselves on a regular basis, who am I holding up? Right. Cause you could die at any time. Yeah. Uh, you know, anybody can get a car accident or trip down the flight of stairs, etc. So if, if I can live my life and that's the beauty of like what you're going through, there's a beauty to that. To, to, to sort of have it in the forefront of your mind that I'm, I'm about to lose everything. Just like in the Bhagavatam, Maharaj Prickett had seven days to live. He knew. And so when you really are very self-aware of this whole thing is temporary, you can get very dialed in quick to what you have to let go of what you, and what you have to embrace. Whereas the rest of us were like, we're going to live forever. It's 1999. We're going to party. Mm -hmm. And we're just like living in this fantasy that there is no end to this timeline. It's just gonna go on an arrow into space forever. And it's just not. And I'll tell you what. Yeah. I'll tell you what. Tell me. I I am parked outside of Yama's door right now at the threshold. You know, I, I'm I am Nachiketas right now waiting to be let in. Mm. And I'm not smart enough to I'm not gonna be smart enough to ask him those three questions. When uh, he knocks on, when he, when he offers me um, those three wishes, but here I am at Yama's house, waiting to you know be escorted, and uh, still to this day I catch myself, you know, scrolling through Instagram reels. That's okay, my we're gonna thing. have to, we're gonna have to delete that from your phone. That's today. Oh my this god, that's. Mission. Give me your like, give me your phone next time I see you. We're getting rid of reels. It always starts off pure. It always starts off. Let me go on Instagram to find Tukram's class. Oh yeah, it starts night. off. That's the bait. That's Maya's bait. Oh, Tukram, this is good. This is good. Tukram's good. Let me go find out when. Uh, next thing you know, you got an alligator versus an anaconda. There, that's where I, mine goes right to there. There you go, and it's still has, before I even hit the search button for the for the transcendental stuff. I'm looking at, you know, how plumbers clear out a clogged thing. See, you, follow, yeah. you follow much better things than I follow. Okay. Plumbers you're looking, clear you're looking out. at plumber, hashtag plumbers, oh. hashtag drains, clogged drains, hashtag, I'm, I, I'm, no. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, so you still, you still get yourself caught up, um, caught up by, caught up by Maya, but I will tell you that my, my, my flavor for things has changed. What do you mean? Uh, for example, um, it used to be, you know, I would go to bed at night and I'd put on a, a movie, right? Right. Easy and, way to wind down the day. Yeah. And I just have, and, and I've never liked like action violent movies ever. But, you know, I always like candy movies, silly movies. Um, you know, and I just do not have a flavor for watching a movie at the end of the night. I would much rather, I like, oh, I need it. I need to listen to a lecture. I need to listen to, you know, some, some bhajans or kirtan. I cannot, you know, sit down and watch an Adam Sandler movie. Just, I just the can't do it. The last thing when you leave your body is you don't want to be meditating on Adam Sandler. I don't think you want to trade so. that in for Lord Vishnu's lotus feet. But at the same time, my mother, you know, I love my mother to death and she's just, she's great. And some, you know, she'll be like, Hey, you want to watch a movie? And I'll watch a movie with her because she loves it. You know, so I'll watch a movie. Like my daughter's like, I'm like, Hey, let's watch a movie. And like, we'll watch a movie together, mm. you know, because they like it. And like, those are sweet memories for them, you know? So I, you know, I, I do what I can, but me, myself personally, when I'm alone, I, I, I can't, it just turns, it's like, it feels like the repulsive side of a magnet when I put on the movie, mm. you know, when I do anything that's not, um, that's not, 
that doesn't involve the name of Krishna or the name of Chaitanya or Haridas or Sridhar or you know, Nityananda. It just doesn't turn me on. I'm with you. You know, uh, last year in October when I felt like... By I, the way, am I doing okay or am I bombing? You're doing thing? good. You're doing All good. Right, good, good, good. You know, last year, th there's something beautiful when you inject Krishna, spirit, whatever you want to call higher power, into life, even so-called tragedy. I know that uh, when I thought I might be dying of COVID last year and and they I got released from the hospital, but it was still very like unstable. I had all my kids come in my room where I was staying. And they'd chant Nishringa Kavacha, these prayers to Lord Nishringa Dev. And that became a, and Bunky was with us, and we'd all chant Nishringa Kavacha together every night. And it was just like a beautiful family ritual, actually. My, my little son would you know, offer some incense, and, you know, and then we'd just chant these Nishringa Kavacha. And to this day, my son, me and my son, and the little boy, sleep together still. And he's just like, before we go to bed, he's like, okay, we're going to chant Nishringa Dev prayers before we go to bed now. And it's mm. one of those things you inject spirit even into tragedy and it has this ripple effect. Now I'm witnessing this in your life yeah. because, you know, now you're staying with you know, your mom and your stepmother. Uh, I mean, your mother and your st stepfather. And, you know, I'm seeing them transform in the service of you. You know what I mean? And it's quite beautiful um, how your deep focused energy on spirit is having a ripple effect of everybody involved, myself included, you know, and it, and it's, again, it's like sobriety. It's a, imagine it being when Maharaj Prick was hearing from Sukadev Goswami, that's the whole beginning of the Bhagavatam. If you're unfamiliar with it, here's a King. And he knew he was cursed to die in seven days. He left his kingdom. He went to a holy place. He inquired from a great soul, Sukadev Goswami, and everybody wanted to hear that conversation. Everybody was inspired. They said the gods came to sit and just listen to that conversation. Great sages came just to sit and be a uh, fly on the wall of that conversation because it's these conversations and it's this focus and this is going back and forth that everybody benefits from and they walk away. Uh, and that's how, you know, uh, Sutta Goswami, right? Because Sutta Goswami was in that, uh, witnessing it and then went in, and, and spoke to the sages of Namasharanya, uh, the Bhagavatam. Um, I'm doing a lot of talking. Kostuba, you want to want to jump in no, here? I, I mean, I'm in one sense, I'm really happy to just to let the two of you go back and forth. But, you know, since you brought me into it. <laughs> um, yeah. I, you know, what I'm thinking is it's I haven't been, you know, with with Gopal since, you know, he's gotten cancer, at least not on this stage. And so it's it's um it's a joy for me just to be with you and and to hear you speak, but particularly in this condition and at this point in this incredibly important point in your life, hear your thoughts and your realizations. And you know, I, I'm thinking. I think it was just last week that we were reading from Bhagavatam where it was talking about how Krishna's. I think even we read some verse from a, from a latter chapter where Krishna, where it's mentioned Krishna says like my business. Or like my pastime is to fulfill people's desires, right? We're talking about genies and, and all of that, right? And, and and so really, you know, what happens is we have desires and Krishna responds to them. If we if we want Krishna, if we want devotional service, if we want bhakti, if we want nothing but divine love, then that's what we receive. And if we want anything else, then that's what we receive. You know, and, and so these yoga practices are, are really meant to refine that desire, to get that desire aimed in a way that's going to be for our eternal benefit, our eternal happiness, you know, our, our eternal joy. And to steer it away from the desire, help us purify, not, not to kill desire, but to purify that desire so that it, it becomes clearly focused. And it just really warms my heart to hear Gopal Chandra speaking. You know, he's a person that's been practicing bhakti for some time now. Um, you know, he, he, but, but still, you know, you're living in this world with, with the rest of us and you weren't exactly born into it and trained in it from an early age. You, you caught on to it a little bit later. He was trained in hardcore. He's a hardcore guy. Did you know that? He's a hardcore I yogi guy. I didn't know that. He's uh, hardcore from Long Island. 
I'm Scott Punk from Long Island. Okay. Yeah, I do. <laughs> but I've been to hardcore shows. <laughs> <laughs> All right. But, you know, actually, you know, Gopal's manner, like he's this tall, handsome yoga teacher guy. But, you know, like a lot of guys like that are like just a little bit sleazy or something. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, he's not you sleazy. Take him in, he's never you know, sleazy. What I'm saying was Gopal Chandra is like so humble, always so pure, you know, just like such a gentle soul. But and now I see that those qualities and then combined with these bhakti practices, which are infused, not just with, um, in other words, there's a method to them and there's a logic to them, but they're also these particular bhakti practices, they're infused with, with Krishna's grace, they're infused with mercy. And, and to hear you speaking now, like, you know, in other words, I've lost my taste for the things I used to have taste for. And now what I want in other words, where, where, where my heart is going, it's no longer interested in the stuff that just distracted me. It's flowing spontaneously. Not like it's not like I have to think. Oh, I don't want. I, it's better I don't watch this movie because I know it's not good for me. It's better that I pick up Bhagavatam and read that because I know that'll help me. No, it's that the heart starts to move there on its own. That mm. the mind wants to go there on its own. That that right there. That's um the ultimate blessing that's the goal of yoga you know that you know I, I think it was last week too that we were reading um from Bhag, you know whatever activities a person performs uh in this life even whatever dharma they're performing it's really not considered very valuable at all if it doesn't provoke an attraction you know for the method for the message of Krishna, for the, you know, if it doesn't connect you with God, if it doesn't connect with this, but when your heart starts flowing that way, it means you, you, you've, you're, you're getting the blessings of your practice. You know, you're getting the blessing. And, and you know, you're not a guy that's, that's, that's run off to the mountains and, and, you know, or, 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 you know, run into the ashram even, but you're just a person that with some humility has been applying these practices day by day. And, and, and as I said, it really warms my heart to see you being blessed in this way at this time in your life. Thank you, Kasuba. Such a great soul. <clears throat> um, you speak too kindly of me, though. <laughs> Not at all. You speak too kindly. I mean, quite of me, frankly, but... everyone always spoke of you that way. You know, as like such a humble, gentle soul. Mm -hmm. Everyone that knows mm -hmm. you. Oh, thank you, <laughs> Prabhu. Was there some Gopal Prabhu? Was there some point? in your life where you said krishna krishna you know what i mean where krishna touched your heart that that moment where you said this there, there, this is yeah there is i remember going to college and in college i i i, I got really bored of my english major and switched my major to religion hmm. and while i was studying religion I had yet to meet the devotees. I had yet to be, to be at the Bhakti Center. But I had this professor, and he introduced um, the class is called Death, by the way. <laughs> and the class is called Death. He introduced us to a lot of the Upanishads and the Bhagavad Gita. The, I think it was the Olivel um, translation, but I could be wrong. And from that point forward, I just always had the Bhagavad Gita with me. It wasn't mm. as it is, but it was a Bhagavad Gita. Always in my backpack, I always had a Bhagavad Gita. And, and I always had, you know, my Upanishads nearby too. And, mm. you know, especially so early on, the, 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 the story of uh, Nachiketa, Sankata Upanishad, really kind of, you know, like cracked me open. And then I met you, Raghunath, and then I met, you know, and then through prying, because you were very good at that time. At that time, you were very good at like, you know, keep, keeping your cards close as to, you know, your religious practice. So I had to like sneaky. really- Sneaky. <laughs> I teach handstands. Sneaky. I just teach handstands. I really had to beg you. It's like, for more information other than Mahabharata, Ramayan and handstands. <laughs> and so you put me in touch with the devotees at Bhakti Center, you know, and through there, there was Rasanath and then Kastuba. And 
so yeah, from like my early, from my early mid twenties, I was like Krishna, yeah, but I did, I still didn't know what that meant though. I still didn't know like how to like step in, you know. So I just kind of kept asking questions and and uh, you know, but I knew since a long time ago that, that, that I knew Krishna. It doesn't mean I was following the four regular principles. It doesn't mean anything, but I. I had a little altar set up, mm. you know, I would, I would say things. That I didn't even know like where it came from. Like one day I told the next girlfriend of mine, I said, you know, I just want to hang out at the Bhakti center with Krishna devotees all the time. And I never heard, I don't know where that even came from. I just <laughs> said it. That's a common feeling, man. Sometimes when you start hanging out with devotees, you're like, I love, I want to just be around these people all the time. How can these people be my people? Yeah. yeah. It's like, you know, in Scrabble, when you don't like your, your letters, you can throw the whole thing out and get new letters. Uh, That's how I feel. Uh, well, I'll tell you, you know, I, I don't have regrets. If, if anything is a regret, regret is that I, I, I didn't come into it earlier, or that I wasn't born into it, or that, I, or a big one is I didn't, you know, do the ashram thing for before I got married and had children. But beyond that, I have, I have no regrets. I, I feel personally that my life is, you know, 10 out of 10. Perfect. I don't feel like I've been shorted anywhere. I don't feel like I've been cheated. Um, if I was given some kind of strange opportunity to go back in time to change certain things in my life, what would it be? It, it, I wouldn't do anything. What? I wouldn't change. I wouldn't change a thing. <laughs> I would do everything. I would keep everything exactly as it is up until this moment. The good, the bad, the ugly, because it's all been a. It's all. It's all been a gift. There have been no curses, and the second people start coming up to me and saying, "Oh, I feel so bad. Oh, you have it so hard. Oh, you know your life. I'm so sorry." I, it, that actually upsets me because I feel like you don't know. And I feel like you're judging me and think I'm such a poor, poor person, but I'm, I'm or like, a victim. You're not or a victim. I'm like the richest person in, in Columbia County right now, dude. <laughs> he actually Sorry is for you, dude. loaded. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Number one in Columbia County. <laughs> the richest guy. Poor. <laughs> but, uh, you, you do know, have uh, a spiritual wealth, my friend, you have a spiritual wealth. I mean, what more of a gift could anybody want that um, they feel freedom from? I mean, if you think about when if you think about material consciousness, I'm losing my body, I'm losing my family, I'm losing my home, I'm losing my dreams. I had a plan, you know, I had, but I had a plan. I had a plan. I had a plan. Was was when you met your your doctor when you first got diagnosis d diagnosed? Did he say like, okay, you got a couple options here? Um, did he say like, okay, you're going to just try this. We're going to go through chemo. We can make it through this. Or was it, what did he say your first time you talked to him? The first time I spoke to my oncologist, he, you know, he's very, very, you know, no nonsense. And he said, well, you know, I looked at your scans. I looked at your blood work. I looked at everything. And honestly, uh, the best we can do is make you as comfortable as possible for as long as possible. Wow. Yeah. And uh, so I, I said something, I said, wait a minute, because you're kind of beating around the bush here. I said, does that mean that there's no beating this, but you could just treat me so that way I'm, I'm experiencing the least amount of physical pain as possible. He says, yeah, that's it. And that was, you know, August, that was October, that was September of 2020. So I've had a very good run with this cancer that's very rare. That's, you know, I, I, like on all, across all the, you know, charts of this cancer, I've hit every, like rare part of it. And um, so that that's what he told me. And I said, all right, so let's just, you know, 
fight this as hard as we can for as long as we can until 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 the options are you know are done and after my two hospital visits i decided that my options were pretty much strapped up there were some other options but i just i i i pray that nobody on this program ever has to like deal with chemotherapy or radiation therapy because you know in one sense you get used to it like you know i'm like yeah it sucks, but it's okay. You just go through it, you know, and then you, then you're fine. But um, after about almost two years of that, you know, with some radiation thrown thrown in, when you finally get a break from that, you realize no, it's not okay at all. It's it's not okay to be you know living on the couch for two weeks at a time and having a week off. Um, I'm sorry, I forget how we got here. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> you mind if I jump in right now? Because you have a positive Jesus. attitude and I want to wind this up in a positive way. But was yeah, there yeah. ever a time that you felt, why God, why, why did you do this to me? Or did you ever like lose faith? Did it ever hurt your faith? Did it, you know what I mean? And, and you obviously have a deeper connection, deeper faith. You're experiencing yoga right now, which is connection with this, the soul and Bhagawan. But did you have these dark nights of the soul in this uh, trial that you're going through? Yeah, of course. I think to say no is ridiculous, and I'm also expecting more of them. Um, but I'm glad you asked that because there are, yeah, I've got one. There are three specific bullet points I'd like to mention to you in regards yes. to that. Uh, one bullet point that I sent over to you was, you know, it's easy to be bitter, but it's just as easy to be grateful, right? It's, it's right. easy to be bitter, but it's just as easy. And then there's this thing that I believe comes from uh, Tukram's class where he says, Krishna places faith in his devotees and he vouches for them. He places and faith in his devotees. And, and he, he vouches, vouches for them. What do you mean by that? What what, what did Sukra mean by that? Well, no, uh, yeah, what, yeah. What does it mean? Be, be placing faith in his devotee is like. Um, um, do you know what I mean? Super, could, could you speak to that? that? Is Krishna places faith in his devotees and he vouches for them? Yeah. I I suppose you know I don't know what context exactly he's spoken in, but I suppose in other words that. What, when one takes the bhakti um particularly this kind of bhakti where it's like i want to love and serve god intimately you know selflessly um that it's it, you're kind of like you you stepped out of like this otherwise like system of justice right you kind of okay. entered the system of mercy so in other words you got to rather than it's like by my own power i will try to overcome all the you know this machine of the material world it's kind of like even though you may have, even though you may be disqualified in, in so many ways, Krishna trusts your intention. Right. He has faith in your intention that I, 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 my mind is full of all kinds of garbage. I have all kinds of horrible, but deep down, I really just want to serve and love you. Okay. I trust that. I have faith in that. I vouch for that. I stand for that. I'll support that. And uh, if you have him on your side, <laughs> you know, really, you have the, the ultimate person vouching for you. Mm. I, I I assume maybe it was something like that. Yeah. I I okay. Kasuba, I think you uh it. hit it right on the head. Mm. I think you hit it right on the head. But as for Dark Knights of the Soul, I, I, I believe, you know, I I've I've had I've gone through many of them. You know, I think that just as much I've never lost faith though. But I've I've asked why. I've asked why. I've 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 done the whole like let's let's make a deal thing let's make but, a deal um, let's make a deal all right Christian, <laughs> listen to this one okay i'll do this if you give me this pass here but ultimately um you know i just kind of no matter what and no matter how like externally dark i may have appeared internally mm. that, that 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 candle that light was never fully extinguished. So mm, sure. it just led me through. And, and then you, 
the Vaishnavas, my family, my friends, you know, just as I said, my whole entire life, you know, brought me here. Like I met my wife in in Mumbai. We had two beautiful children. That was on um, one of your uh, retreats. Oh. Pilgrimage. It was yeah. Pilgrimage. That's how I'm gonna start selling my pilgrimages. Meet your soulmate with Raganov. I know it's having at least twice. Yeah, we just arranged arranged their marriage on the spot. No, I'm just kidding. But they, you know, they met on pilgrimage. You know, so everything. Oh, and uh, and uh, Sri Govinder here. They met at the uh, Bhakti immersion. Oh, at least three times. At least <laughs> Dustin and Meg. Uh, and, uh, Dustin Meg. Uh, Manjri Gopika, Manjri Gopika, and, and Gopika, yeah. Gopika. Manjri Gopika. Hey, you know what? This should be my whole new gig. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> the Love Yatra with Raghunath. The Love Guru. <laughs> yeah. um, and all of that is, you know, all that's Krishna's fault. Yes. And, and, and it's all beautiful <laughs> and perfectly arranged, you know? Nice. So, so yeah, so as much of the dark nights of the soul I may have had, I've had more more light than darkness. You You know, know, that's such a beautiful realization. And in a sense, what I hear you saying is, and it's the perfect mindset to be in as you approach this transition. It's just Krishna, everything that you've given me, I accept that you gave it to me for my own good. Mm -hmm. And whatever you want to give me in the future, I'm happy to accept it. And that means that, that ultimately, you know, like even we see at the very pinnacle of the Bhagavatam, you know, it, it, the pinnacle of the Bhagavatam is the pinnacle of all of Yasudev's work. It's the pinnacle of the Vedas and the Upanishads and the Itihasas and the Puranas. And you come to the Bhagavatam, which is the pinnacle of it all. And then you get to the pinnacle of the pinnacle, which is the 10th canto. And the pinnacle of the pinnacle of the pinnacle is, is when the gopis come out for the Rasa dance. And, and when they come out at night and Krishna says to them, what are you all doing here? D- don't you want to go back and go back to your, your dharma, go back to your families, go back? And they say, you know what? We've lived all of that. All we want is to serve you, right? Whate- whatever you want, you know, we're your servants. And, and whatever you want to give me, I trust is for my, for my own good. Mm. And uh, I think when you come, th- that's called pure devotion. You know, it's like, I don't have a separate agenda. My agenda is your agenda. That's when the you know the, the leaf has no separate agenda from the from the from the tree. The leaf, if it has, if it tries to come up with a separate agenda, it just dries up. <laughs> oh, that's a right? good one, Kastuba. Yeah. I'm stealing that. that. We haven't used the leaf before. has no agenda. What did you say? Separate, leaf has separate no agenda, agenda from the tree. Separate than the tree. Yeah, and I'm so getting out of here, man. I'm gonna join another tree. <laughs> no, you're not. <laughs> no, I'm your servant. And when the leaf is connected like that, it's nourished and it's vibrant. And I think you're. I, I I really, I really feel your the blessings that you've received at this time in your life to be able to think like that. Mm-hmm. You know, when 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 your body's falling apart, when your body's in pain, when you know mm-hmm. that you're about to be torn away from everything that, in one sense, everything that you know, but you actually know something way beyond that, something that doesn't deteriorate, something that, something that doesn't rot away, something that's eternal, yeah. and you feel that connection. It's it's such a, it's such it's. I can't even describe what a pleasure it is to. See. To see you uh, yeah. in this condition like that, and yeah, you know, you look back, Gopal, and, and your like devotional career. I'm just thinking, like your, that pilgrimage, you met your guru, like you, uh, Radha Swami. It was one of these very f- freak things where Radha Swami was traveling the same place as we were traveling. We literally spent, you know, ten out of fourteen days with Radha Swami traveling with us intimately. And, you know, these deep and, and when you look back at everything was perfect in your life, that, that, you, that realization is so beautiful. And I appreciate that you say, hey, I'm still going to have another dark night of the soul. Mm-hmm. And right, uh, right, we right, had right, that right. Krishna. We had that Krishna miracle together last week where you were just struggling with something. And you're in you, you were struggling. I, I came over and you're just like, well, what? you know, a classic, a classic bitter. Why me? Why did this happen to me? And we just opened the Bhagavatam and it was right at this point where Krishna says, the devotees get no karma. Everything is hand delivered by Lord Krishna to, to, to uh, speed track. You know, you know, you get like, what do you call that global entry? You know, you're, you fast track them to pure devotional service. 
And I, I feel like witnessing you, I'm, I'm, I'm learning like this and, and your realizations are deep and profound and the message board has been lighting up this entire time. I highly recommend you download it so you can read it. But I want to really thank you for having you on the show today. And I, I want to thank you for having you in my life today. And I want to I'm looking forward to seeing you. And he's going to even try to come out for this Wisdom of the Sages retreat for a few hours this week. Yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing him. I'm heading up tomorrow. I want to spend time with you, brother. We'll I'll see, see you soon. too, Chris Hugo. Can I just say one final thing? Please. Before oh. we close up. Um, you know, my, 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 the advice from a dying man that everyone's looking for is not so profound. You know, just, just love people. Let go of any bitterness, let go of any anger and respond with compassion. And with whatever little facilities and whatever faculties you have, try to make the world a better place around you. That's mm. all. Thank That's you all. so much, Rubu. Thank it's you very beautiful, for, Kasuba Ragu, thank you for taking my mumbling and stumbling and turning it into sage advice. <laughs> <laughs> it is sage advice, Rubu. You're the sage. You're the same. No, 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 no. And you're giving us lessons right now. I think everybody really appreciates it. <sighs> All right. Hare Krishna. Well, I will see you tomorrow also. Go, Paul Prabhu. Yes, I'm sir. Come to your house. And I want to thank yes, everybody sir. for joining us today. What a special interview day with Gopal. Great one to share. You know, remember, you got to tell our friends. That's how we support friends. The best thing you can give to someone, you know. Uh, besides becoming a monthly Patreon member, of course, is giving them spiritual information. Share it with people because people need this type of stuff. And Gopal, you spoke so, so lucidly. It was so beautiful to hear your realizations. And um, yeah, I want to thank you for joining us. I want to thank everybody for joining us live on Zoom. If you want to join us live on Zoom, you can do it. Just email Mara over here, wisdomofthesages108 at gmail.com. Um, and she'll give you the codes to join us. Otherwise, we are available wherever you get podcasts. If you're li listening on Facebook, we do it every day. You can uh, binge listen um, and go to our website and check out all our offerings this year at Sage Academy. If you want to just meet us personally and meet some of these great presenters we have and educators we have that are part of our team. It is um, our great joy to meet everybody. Looking forward to seeing everybody this week and also next week in New York City. Thank you, everybody. It's a beautiful day for a beautiful day. I got to run. <laughs> I gotta run. We love you, everybody. I mean, you said it, so I thought you were going to end it. <laughs>